Good morning and happy Sunday. Uh, today we are looking at um, the last little bit of Hebrews 2. Um, and uh, there's a sense in which when I'm talking about Hebrews right the way through, it's going to be fairly, fairly much the same thought all the way through because Hebrews has one main theme, which is how far superior Jesus is to everything else. He's superior to everything portrayed in the Old Testament. He's superior to the offerings, superior to the great men of the Old Testament, superior to the angels. He is superior to everybody. He is greater and his actions and activities and, and dealings are greater. Everything about Jesus is better than the Old Testament. Everything about the New Covenant is better. And it takes a lot of swallowing that, actually, because there are some great heroes in the Old Testament. We spent weeks talking about David, that great hero of the Old Testament. Jesus is David's greater son. He's a descendant of David, but he is greater, far, far above David in the things that he did. But we're looking at verses 14 to 18 of chapter 2, which is talking about an aspect of the greatness of Jesus, um, which is that in order to be able to understand, perhaps help, sympathize, support people of flesh and blood, he became flesh and blood in order to do that, in order to be the savior of mankind. He The Son, part of the Trinity. It's difficult to describe it because almost all our words carry the wrong kind of meaning because the Trinity is very difficult to understand. That God is in three persons and each of the three persons is equally God and yet they are separate and yet they are one. So please don't misunderstand any of the words I try to use to describe Jesus. But Jesus, God himself, became flesh. He himself, verse 14, chapter 2, verse 14. He himself likewise partook of the same nature, that is, flesh and blood. There are people who say God could not ever completely become flesh. But this is the great, the great mystery of uh, the birth of Jesus. This is why um, the, the, the coming of Jesus into the world is so, so um, clearly described in the Gospels because it is an, uh, an almost unbelievable event. It's almost impossible to, to actually think that God himself, this, this person, this, this being that created all things, through whom everything was created, who is the likeness of God, who is everything, he is God himself, how is it at all ever possible that this being was confined to a baby, was helpless like a baby? How is it possible to believe, to understand how that could ever have happened? But it did, and it's why Christmas is why the hymns and songs of Christmas are just full of such amazing words. We're so used to them, we, we, we know them by heart. But when we stop and think about what they're trying to convey in words, it is this great, unbelievable mystery that God became flesh and dwelt among us. That God became flesh. And he did it, as Hebrews describes it, he partook the same nature that through death he might destroy him who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong bondage. That was his mission, to set people free, to free people who were under fear of death all their lives. Uh, 
you know, death has no more dominion over us. We don't need to approach death the way um, people who don't know Jesus approach death. We are, it is, death has been transformed by the coming of Jesus. It's completely different. And not for, not for nothing is, is this amazing chapter in Isaiah when it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It says to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to those who are afraid, to those who are afflicted. Jesus came to set us free, to set us free from fear, to set us free from the domination of Satan, to set us free from the bonds of death. And he suffered and was tempted. And that makes him able, as it says in verse 18, to help those who are tempted. We have in heaven one who understands our human condition completely and utterly. Completely and utterly. Someone described it um, years ago as a the lovely little illustration. You've probably heard it, but it's a nice one to think about. That um, Jesus coming to this earth could be illustrated as, uh, uh, if it was possible, as this little fairy story. You know, there's this huge barn and this bird has flown into the barn and come in through a very small aperture. And even with the doors open, the farmer can't persuade the bird to come down from the rafters of the barn and fly out through the door. The only way he would be able to, to show the way out and rescue the bird would be if he could become a bird himself and fly out of the door and the bird would follow him. He understands our plight because he became one of us. He became our brother and he became our saviour. And, and this magnificent, um, almost unbelievable action of God to place himself within his own creation in order to redeem it is is astonishing. It is something to praise him for with every ounce of strength that you have today. Let your praise today exceed perhaps anything you've ever done as you ponder the enormous, the, the enormous act of Jesus in becoming flesh in order to redeem us. I don't know the words to say it any more than that. But as you think about it today, give him the praise and the glory. God bless you. Have a great day as you ponder these incredible truths. However familiar they are to you, ponder them, imagine them, think about them. Think about what Jesus did. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.